So I'm actually going to show a short film. And you might be saying, well, you know, why when I'm standing right here is this asshole going to make us watch a short film? And I thought a couple of reasons. One, I think the team was worried I might be drunk because of the altitude and drinks being available. That's not true. That wasn't a problem. Um, I also always wanted to have a film in Sundance. And so now, <laughs> check. Uh, so I've had that. Um, and also, the film allows for better storytelling, because you're actually going to see graphics and animations that I wouldn't be able to do with shadow puppets and hand figures. And then the last reason is it's, just, it's always been a lifelong dream of mine to introduce the person uh, that this film features. So uh, with that, uh, let's play the film. It's an interesting time overall for the world of media. Everyone's a content producer. But it all begs the question of something I call the denominator problem, and that's that there's still only 24 hours in a day. If we're lucky, we sleep for eight of them. We work. We do things that don't involve an opportunity to transfer our attention to an advertisement. So despite that, in the numerator, we can create infinite amounts of content. The denominator is how much human attention is actually available for advertisers, because without attention, an advertising can have no effect. So people have more and more options to opt out of advertising altogether. Paid ad-free models, DVRs, ad blockers online. You have these two forces that are putting advertising in a very weird place right now, and that's reaching this kind of crisis state where it's in competition with all of the creation of, of, of content, and at the same time trying to figure out what its role is going to be in an interactive on-demand world. The goal has to be less ads. I mean, it's, it's what consumers are already doing. Historically, advertising was based on a reach frequency model. And the frequency was saying, I need to expose Joe to this ad 20 times. Not because I need Joe to watch the ad 20 times, but because I don't know which ones he paid attention to. And I'm seeking Joe's attention, and then I'm seeking recall for the message. We also know that that reach frequency model is based on some waste built in. Not everyone's in the market for trucks, not everyone's in the market for diapers, not everyone is my target audience. If we can make targeting better, we can reduce some waste. If we can make interactivity part of it, we can increase message recall. If we could get from needing to show Joe an ad 20 times to one time, we can get to a tolerable ad load, but the advertiser still gets their return, the consumer gets their content subsidized, and a publisher has a better overall experience. Yeah, yeah, oh. As far as the ads themselves, we're going to an interactive and on-demand world. Where is interactive and on-demand advertising? If I can watch content when and where I want, how come I can't time and place shift my advertising? It just takes a while for advertising to catch up to the medium. Get your morning paper! The typical currency for a video ad, for a 30 second video ad, is, is the CPM rate, right? That's the cost per thousand. Uh, so let's say a typical rate is a $30 CPM. That's the $30 per thousand video ads shown. That means iJoe is one consumer, the marketer is paying three cents to show me a 30 second video ad. Now, from the marketer's perspective, that sounds like a good rate. From Joe's perspective, that's paying me three cents for 30 seconds of my time, or really paying for three cents worth of my content for 30 seconds of my time. Most consumers should buy back their time. They should go get a DVR, they should add block, they should add avoid, and that's what's happening, right? Because marketing and media buying doesn't properly value human attention. What it's valuing is the potential for human attention. If we can move to a world where we can do guaranteed attention, fewer ads, interactive ads, immersive ads, we could raise the rate and we could move the conversation from a battle between uh, content creators and marketers about lower, lower, lower rates and saying, no, it's about guaranteeing proper human attention, the right audience, someone who's actually in market for goods and services, and a great experience overall, and higher rates that properly values people's time. And this isn't a theoretical you know, exercise anymore. Like, I mean, you see with all sorts of platforms offering ad-free options, they're searching for that price point where they say, at what price would a consumer say, here's my money, I'll take the ad-free version. That's the price that we have to get to for advertising.
So I promise I don't hate advertising. My, my actual title that Fox gave me, uh, some Michigasa president of advanced advertising. So I actually do believe that there'll be a future for it, so I have a job. But, um, but I think that the, the thing I'm most interested in when we talked about storytelling and Sundance is that I, I think that the opportunity going forward is actually going to be to be more immersive, uh, less interruptive. And, and I actually think, is this thing going? There we go. So I actually think th this one chart is the single most interesting chart to me. And that actually might prove how nerdy and, and terrible it is for me to be up here right now. But, but like, think of this as the theoretical value of human attention. Because Sundance, they, they talked about earlier, there's going to be 200 films that are going to be coming out. We saw the Snapchat. We saw uh, YouTube. We see Netflix. We see HBO. The sum total of all the content being created in the world divided by a fixed number of hours in the world means that the value of human attention is at an all-time high. But we don't seem to treat it as such all the time. So as you saw in the last one, the value of human attention is at an all-time high, but the price advertisers pay theoretically has stayed flat for 10 years. Those two things don't add up, and what we've got to find a way to do is actually get better at it. Um, this, is, this is, I think, is the crux of it, although that typo, I have no idea what that's supposed to say. Um, but we're all. I, that, that, that word is attention. That's how much I know this. We're all in the business of time and attention. Whether you're a story uh, creator, whether you're in news, whether you're in entertainment, whether you're Fox and you're making Empire, whether you're a film producer, or if you're a brand that would like to sell your product, your business is being in the business of attention. So the value of people's attention is at an all-time high because people have more control over it than they've ever had before, and they have more choice. I mean. I know Hulu's going to be up here. And last year's upfronts, one of the biggest pieces of news was that the entirety of Seinfeld was available on Hulu. That wasn't even new content. That chart that I just showed you, that the value of human attention and the choices people have, only calculated all new content getting created. They actually have the access to the entire archives of human history. So one thing that you're going to see a lot of with what we're doing at Fox, and you see my new boss up in the top left, is actually practicing what we preach, which is to say, we value people's time and attention. Why we put effort and money into storytelling. Um, uh, actually, on stage, and I won't repeat the brand because James, uh, James said it. I'm sure the sellers didn't like it quite as much. But he made a very good point. We spend millions and millions of dollars getting people to suspend belief. And then we stop to sell them brand X. I'm not going to repeat. Um, what if we get to a consumer-friendly version of advertising? And what we look to storytellers to do is what would that look like? What would an immersive, interactive version of storytelling look like? Um, up in the top right, we just did it today where people are going to be watching the X-Files without ad interruptions by getting them to willingly trade their attention on the front end. But what we need is more storytellers to say, what does an interactive first-person version uh, of advertising look like? What is a brand story that someone can immerse themselves in and participate with? Um, and that is it. I'm, the thing I can do most to help is end early. Thanks, everybody.